We're going to take an in-depth look at the first two books for Saga 2nd Edition, published by Studio Tomahawk and distributed by Gripping Beast. Rather than aim at describing Saga to those of you who have never heard of it, we're going to assume you have some knowledge of the game and focus on exploring the changes from version 1. The stated aim of Saga 2 is to tidy and tighten up the game. To fulfil this goal, Studio Tomahawk have split out the rules from the factions. This is the first major change in the new edition of Saga. The universe books are meant to be standalone gaming aids, and it is suggested you do not cross factions between the universes. It is not prescribed, but it is stated that there may be unexpected combinations that make the games uneven if you do so. The new universe books also mean that the older material is pretty much redundant, other than Aegis and Arthur, which is said to be fully compatible with the new rules. More on the first of these, the Age of Viking universe book later. First up, let's look at the rulebook. It's a softback, 52-page volume that covers the rules and not a lot else. It is split into sections with a logical order that aids learning. That is helped by some excellent diagrams that add value to explaining the various rules. It ends with a glossary and a quick reference sheet. The basics have stayed similar with just a minor terminology change. Armour is still armour, now limited to values between 2 and 6. Attacks are one statistic called aggression, which applies to melee and has a shooting value in parentheses. Unit deployment and formation are changed somewhat. You begin by deploying or moving one figure and the rest of the deployment or movement is then dictated by where that figure ends up. This will make an immediate tactical change to the game when combined with other changes. The other principles of the game such as turns and movement distances are the same as first edition. This means it is still an I go you go game at heart. The orders phase has been tweaked but some things that affect the orders phase have been changed a lot. The new battle board has basic abilities above the faction name, with advanced abilities below. Activating abilities follows the same familiar format of rolling saga dice and allocating. However, the number of dice generated is calculated differently. Warlord or Hero, Warrior and Levy are all changed. The Levy can now generate dice. The upper limit you can roll at once is increased to 8, and dice left on the board over a turn do not count towards the dice you can throw. No longer will they be wasted. After rolling, you place the Saga dice, as you always did, for the abilities you want to use during you or your opponent's turn. Reacting to your opponent's order phase has been limited to the very start of the order's phase or the very end. For the first time, you are asked to ensure you give your opponent an opportunity to react before moving on. After orders comes activation, the meat of the game, where charges are made and glory won. It is with charges that we start, and these are a new activation type, sort of. Previously a charge was just part of movement, now it is an activation all of its own. This fits around the general move towards lighter, leaner rules and less ambiguity, which pervades the whole book. Charges and movement are similar and are affected by the same major change. All movement is now in a straight line, no snaking around or trying to work out how much you have turned. A straight line for each figure is affected by terrain and the new deployment movement rules. Which figure you move first will impact where they end up and how you, they are arranged on the battlefield. The only exception to the straight line is for those units with a movement rate of L, they may change the L for two M movements. These must be continuous and the unit must move the full first M. Terrain now comes in four types, open, uneven, dangerous and impassable. This affects movement and can also fatigue your units. Further adjustments have been made to how movement is affected by other units. This is much clearer and the diagram is very well done. Additionally, there is a new free move available called Maneuver. It does have strict limitations, but allows a unit stuck out of the way to head towards the action, while you use your available dice to do some fighting. Charging follows the same rules as movement, but must stand in a melee. If you misjudge this with the first figure you move, and they do not end up in melee, then the charge is cancelled, and you lose your activation. Be very careful with this, or you could end up with your best laid plans in ruins. 
You can measure at any time, but once you move a figure, there's no going back. The use of fatigue to interfere with movement is now much more useful. Shooting has only had minor adjustments, but how Saga abilities and fatigue are used has changed dramatically, and affects melee as well. Instead of the attacker using Saga abilities or fatigue to influence shooting or melee, then the defender doing the same, players now alternate using them. You can also swap between one and the other. This phase of shooting on melee only ends when both players pass consecutively. Saga is a game of fighting, mainly close combat, so we will leave the shooting to the slaves and lower orders and concentrate on the real issue, chopping each other into little bits. The biggest change is a new step one of combat, which allows a defending unit to close ranks. Closing ranks improves a defender's chances of survival, but at the expense of their attacking capabilities. Like shooting, the use of Saga abilities and fatigue is now alternated between players. And there is also a dice limit. No more than 32 d6 can be thrown in an attack. Defence roles have an attacker's effects applied first, then defenders, but the owning player can add these modifiers in any order they wish. This is a nice adjustment that means you can maximise your defence with some careful maths. Minor changes to removal of casualties will take some thought and the withdrawal move is now a full S move rather than up to S previously. Fatigue is still accumulated in the same way, although any loss of a friendly unit within S will also cause a unit to gain fatigue. Every type of unit, unless otherwise stated, now has a fatigue limit of 3 from Warlord to Levy. Any extra unit may get are discarded. Resting is now allowed more than once per turn. The new part of fatigue is using it to cancel enemy activations, a powerful tool if used correctly. It is worth noting you can use more than one fatigue in a melee or shooting to improve your armour save. Buildings are no longer part of the base game but will be making an appearance in the Book of Battles when it arrives. The terrain rules are much clearer and structured than previously without actually changing too much. The addition of dangerous terrain adds an extra and welcome nuance. Special abilities are where some of the most interesting changes have been made. Firstly, there is no longer any side-by-side -side rule, as warlords now enter combat on their own. Rules like determination, we obey and pride have been updated with important changes. The old resilience is now two abilities, resilience and bodyguards. Resilience allows unsaved hits to be cancelled at the expense of fatigue, and bodyguards allows unsaved hits to be passed to nearby hearthguard. These are also not limited to warlords or heroes. Equipment and saga abilities are covered in depth. Some subtle changes have been made, for example only one saga ability with the activation reaction keyword can be used per enemy activation. The saga ability section signs off with some handy reminders and tips, all the chapters of these and they are very useful. Assembling your warband is very similar to the previous edition. The Warlord has changed a little, but it is still free. The other levels of, of normal troops are costed at the same level as they have always been. Mercenaries and legendary units are covered in very clear detail without providing examples of these, as these are in the universe books. Finally, you are given the updated Clash of Warriors scenario. It has changes to deployment, terrain placement, additional optional special rules and new victory conditions. It is the only scenario provided in the rulebook. For old players this won't be an issue as you can use the ones in the previous books, but new players will need to look online in the meantime for some variety. The rulebook then ends with the glossary and quick reference sheet.